Moho to send. Moho to send. This is Lisa Marie. Hey, y'all. I got some time, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to be doing with the shelving and other ideas around the house, other things that's coming. So if you have time, I'd love for y'all to come here. You know, I like to... Uh, work my designs over on you. And I want to tell you some funny stuff about these beautiful chairs that was the inspiration. These chairs were the inspiration for this whole Ghana kitchen. And I got to always remember, people are watching for the first time. Let me pull these curtains down. I know my plants be, they be, see, they, my plants will just stop. My, my curtains is wrinkled because the plants is taking over. I'm going to iron these curtains. I'm going to iron a couple of things around here. Now, nah, I ain't no iron girl, but I'm going to have an iron girl soon. But let's talk a little bit about the kitchen, okay? Because it's coming along. I know, I know. Don't worry. Kwame Krum is going to be up there. And all the other stuff that's going to go there is going to go there. So let's talk about some things we're working on. First, let's just talk about the magnificent shelving. I think we need to just open up so you could see the height of the shelf my measurements exactly i'm kind of, i'm really excited about it like i mean either the window now i think the floor is a little lopsided i've noticed that so it looks like the shelving is kind of going lopsided a little bit at least that part but that's a small thing a small thing so this is a hundred percent mahogany wood from ghana Check out the beautiful and dink right there. I'm going to have that juafe. I'm going to put it on something that actually could be seen. And I, I'm going to tell you, I know what and where. I'm going to show you this new idea that I had. Okay, so anyway, let me go back because I'm doing it too fast. So this is the juafe, which is a symbol of beauty, of feminine qualities, of cleanliness. Gina mean, which is the symbol of God. And uh, also Juafe again. So that's how I really wanted. At first, I told Kwame, I said, I, this is exactly this. I said, I want Juafe, Jinyami, Juafe, right? And then on this side, I wanted the same. But when I went to see Kwame, and that's the thing, y'all, when you are designing, sometimes you have to actually sit with uh, your carver, your carpenter. Hopefully not your carpenter, it'll be a little hard, but your carver, your weaver, because sometimes they don't get it right or they think they just don't get it right. And even though, like, you tell them to consult with you, they don't always do. So he started actually this side first. And I felt it in my fam in my soul. I said, Kwame's going to do the two G, you know what I mean? And he's going to do the Juafe. So I said, Kwame, I'm, I, please make sure before you start to please tell me. So, because I want to remind you to do the two. Jewel phase and Gina Mean, because I got Gina Mean, you know, a lot in the house, so I wanted this. This is, a, isn't that a beaut? I mean, that comb symbol is so beautiful. But, and I, because I thought it happened, I came and he did it. I said, Kwame, no, it was two Jewel phase and one Gina Mean on both sides. I wanted them even. So I forgave him, which is a lot of forgiving I've been having to do, because this side is right. And then, like I said, there's a surprise Juafe inside because uh, Kwame was started carving on this side of the wood, and it wasn't smooth enough, and that matters. So he had to turn it around, unnail it, turn it around, and nail it back because this side was smoother. This is what happened with the uh, um, it happened with the wardrobe as well. But I kind of like it because. That's Kwame. That must be Kwame's signature. Now I'm going to make it like Kwame's signature. There's always going to be an extra indinkra symbol inside. <laughs> I'll show y'all. Uh, I'll show y'all on the other um, wardrobe as well. There will always be one inside because if the wood's not smooth enough, he turns it around. I don't have a problem with that. But so that was the original plan, but it's the other way around. And I always remember that Kwame did it because I always remember, you know, it, it's a good. It's kind of like a joke in a way, and I'm okay with it because you can't be mad at more indinkra symbols. So what were some of the things that I really thought about when I sketched this bad boy? Uh, I wanted, uh, yes, believe it or not, I wanted a shelf. The, the guy looked at my sketch and looked at it well and got it right. Like I was watching, I'll tell you, he went through my whole sketchbook. I guess he was figuring, well, let me see what else you got. 
I really wanted a shelf here because my, in my mind, I thought that I could put some herbs. It's true, I did say more herbs because first of all, herbs grow easily. Mine is outdoors, not right now, but they could be up here. I said plants or herbs, but very light. If it's plants, it's just the plants from the village. And if it's herbs, then it's just the herbs that I don't have. And I thought because this is a south-facing window, that beautiful light, it's green, the, the green. Of course, uh, Kwame wants to give me the two white vases that's made out of the cow horns for his trees from his um, his mother's, his village, and his, his plants, rather. And they are green, you know, with red and white speckles. Goes exactly with the house. So, and then I'm going to do two, maybe other plants or two herb plants. We'll see right here. I ain't put no shade but oil, y'all. You can see I just got a shower uh, right in the middle. So four plants inside my, this is, was my dream. So somebody had mentioned, and that, you know, I get it. He was like, hey, it, it looks so beautiful with the raw wood. But I know, you know, she said, I know you have your vision for your Ghana kitchen. Yes, you know what? I uh, to me, I love the structure, but all I can see is it, what is going to the final result. Like I don't even see it right now. I see it, and I see what it's going to be. So yeah, this would like go against the whole kitchen, like the whole kitchen, and then that, like that for me, probably not. That's why you know I'm painting them too, but maybe I won't. But I'm thinking about painting them black. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. The shelving here, but but it is beautiful. And if I was not this here but if I was to keep it I would actually stain it I, I'm not keeping it at all like not for a second but if I was to do this for somebody else's house uh, I would do it like the armoire I would I would make it I would bring out the colors and the richness just like the armoire the armoire is the same mahogany wood that's in here but it's stained and polished and it turns out like this and that, sorry about the lighting, but don't worry, our lighting guy is coming in soon, so we'll have some better lighting. See, that can look like this if they stained that and, and polished it. But because I already did this look, see, this is already done. Yeah, I'm just looking at the wood like it's changing on me. It's probably the sun. But anyway, this is already done. So I, I don't tend not to want to do what I did already because that's, yeah, it's not fun. Like you, you got all these carpenters and carvers at your, you know, at your doorstep, really at your fingers. Uh, why have the same thing? Plus that's not the thing. Y'all, we need more color in life. And I'll be watching things like this YouTube channel called House. And oh my God, every time they highlight design of the house be all just one color and neutral palettes and uh, monochromatic. And, oh no, I mean, not just, I mean, if you like that's fine, but come on now. They do have one uh, section of houses, house colorful houses. It's like 10 videos and that's it, the rest is. And I'm just like, no, why? that's not it. That's not it, we need color. We need a colorful, house, a colorful kitchen, a cultural kitchen, a theme kitchen. So that's why that's got to be green. And think about it too. If you just get it where it is, it's like, where does the creativity come in? And it's almost like, yeah, it might be fearful so I say, oh my God, the mahogany wood. But the good part is I'm in Ghana where they have lots of mahogany wood. So it doesn't make you think in that scarcity mindset. That's what I love about being in Ghana. That's what I love about decorating in Ghana. It takes you out of the scarcity mindset that, oh my God, it's real wood. Like, do you paint it? Why would you do that? Instead of, I could shellac it and do the da da. It takes you out of that, that scared vibe. So no, not there. Yes, thank you. And it is custom. The other thing is, I already designed it. It's not like I bought it in the store. It's not like I saw it in the store. I saw it in my mind and I created it. And not just I created it, it was truly a co-creation. Co because how, you know, Kwame got the carpenter. Kwame got the first carpenter, the one that did the first armoire. A beautiful job. Kwame got this carpenter, the one that did the second. The, this, I want to give it to the carpenter. Like the, this, the measurements down pat, 
uh, the height down pat, you know, each shelving, the way, if you saw the sketch, it looks like this. He was looking, he was counting it on the, on the, on the sketch. He was like, okay, she got four across, you know, I mean, oh my God. Like I was watching him keeping to the, the sketch like nobody I ever saw. And I think that made me think he must obviously work with other people who, you know, cause you know who, them other folks, they go down to that timber yard and they have them Africans do, you know, them kind of wanted exact. So I think that they're used to uh, creating what they can see. And that's everything for a designer, somebody that can see your vision. Esther did the same thing. Esther did the same thing with the robes and the uh, apron. So it's always a beautiful thing when you, could, when you do it and you see it. And I love that. Greetings to you, darling. So I, when I'm telling you everything I love about this, I, when I when it was in the um, art center after you know Kwame was while Kwame was carving and Kwame first of all Kwame is a genius. This is genius work to me. Kwame is so so talented. His he's a carver and that's what that is. He's a carver, a great carver. Um, I uh, yeah. So I I love everything about this, um, but I love this the lack of the space that it's not taken up. That was very important to me when I designed this, was that I didn't want it to feel like the big bulky piece in the kitchen. Do you know what I'm saying? And I knew, I always tell you, the refrigerator opens because I measured it right, that he made it to the specifications. And because my other thing was this too. I didn't want this to be out to here. I didn't want that to, ooh, you see, I want, first of all, I want to be in this view. So, I mean, I thought a lot about where everything was and relative to, and even this, because Kwame had said, well, if you open this, then it's going to hit this. And I said, it doesn't matter, because first of all, I don't go in here a lot, and I don't even need it that open. So that was a little small thing, and it, it, it was exactly, it worked out. Now, originally, y'all, and I would do another one like that for someone else's house. Let me tell you what the original sketch was, and then I redid it because I thought about it. The original sketch was to accommodate this. So I wanted to make an opening in the middle so that the trash can could actually go in here. But I knew that this is why, you, I bet you could guess why I didn't do it, because it would have to come out just a little more. Even though a lot of it would be back there, it would still come out more than I wanted it to. That was the only reason why. And also, let me tell you, it would give me so much left shelf less shelf space because you have to accommodate, if you got it under here and shelves on top, you got to accommodate for it opening. You got to, and that's another thing, I want the cane man for the next one. Paint the inside too, please. Okay. You got to accommodate for it being open. So it would, this would have took up all the space. Where would the shelving be? I would have had to create shelving, shorter shelves, and just shelving around. But nice design. If I had a bigger kitchen, I, I could still see myself doing it. I mean, I'm not mad at that, the, the first design, but it wasn't going to. I, I didn't want, again, what was the most important thing to me? That it wasn't this big, bulky piece that got in the way of everything. That felt like it was taking space. It looks like it could be here. And that's what I wanted. So when you think about your designs or think about, you know, even decorating or putting things into your home, what's important to you? Is the space important to you? Is what's surrounding it important to you? If the wall is important to you and you want to don't take up the whole wall, think about that. You know, is the dimension important to you? You know, what do you want to do with it? I already knew or I thought that I knew that I wanted to, that I wanted to have bowls that were because this is going to be green. Okay, let me tell you what, why, why did I choose green? Well, it's, it kind of was easy because the main thing in here that I started off with, of course, besides the chairs, were the red cabinets. So that was the biggest bulk of color, was the red cabinet. If you remember, there was nothing, after, once I, there was first what it was, and then once I stripped everything down, the red cabinets, right? So then came the yellow walls. So we already got red, we got yellow. The greens, look at the greens. The green comes in the curtain and the green comes in there. Of course the chair, which is still cool because the chair is doing it. But 
I knew that I needed to bring, I wanted to bring in more green. I thought about green on the light bulb, which I'm still thinking about. I have so many ideas about the light bulb, but the green on the light bulb or the, a green cabinet, because you don't see green cabinets. And it's gonna be a beautiful green. I don't know, I'm gonna go search for the green, and when I see the green, I'll know it. I'm not gonna just get this green. No, it's gonna be a perfect green. And so then I thought, what, what I wanted, why I wanted this shelf in the first place was as a display of color and still the red, yellow, green thing. So the green, and I had this picture of bowls all inside, yellow and red bowls on top of the green, and, you know, inside the green. So we still have our red, yellow, green thing because it's important to me, y'all. It's important to me. And I still want that. So I got this idea of some bowls. So, okay. Let's go over here. So up here is not going to be these. They're gonna be somewhere else or wherever, I'm not even sure. But uh, they're not gonna be up here. That, that I know for sure. So, so these, okay. So that's the reflection, okay. So these are not gonna be up here. Um, but what is gonna be up here are, sh are I thought, baskets with this beautiful shape, not quite this shape, they had this other shape. And I was inspired by the statues that uh, Kojo has, which Kojo is Kwame's brother Kojo, of the women carrying the original clay calabashes on their heads. Not even calabashes, they call, they call them clay pots. And the shape is kind of almost like a feminine woman's shape. Just a tiny, I call them almost like a genie lamp, but bigger and wider. So I was like, yeah, you know what? That's my design. I'm gonna design baskets in that shape. And I, I of course, you know, you know me and my measurements, I don't play. I got the measurements, how wide I want it. I gave it to a guy, but he's so busy all of the time that I really realized he's not gonna be able to do it, whether he says it or not, and it's okay. Because what took me so long, I wasn't getting what I wanted, you know, I couldn't get it at all. That what made me think, I said to myself, you know what? Let me, let's, let me, we needed, we were going to, okay, so we were going to go with this other brother from the north, uh, from the east, no, from the north. But north is kind of far, y'all, to, to do it because the other guy in the art center was too busy. So Kwame said, well, you got to give him a picture of the clay pots, like it's called pots, that the ladies used to carry in the village, some still do. Uh, because that's the only way, we, he's far, we gotta send pictures, and I, that's a hard thing sometimes to do. You wanna get your, your designer or your person that realizes your design's close to you. I'll just talk to you. So, no, nothing. But uh, we need some oil, we dry, but anyway. So yeah, so I was like, okay, you know what? Kwame, you're right. We do need to get him a picture. So Kwame went and he was going to get something else and he found the woman that had the, uh, the clay pots, the Calabash clay pots, right? He found the woman and just took pictures because we were going to send the, send the pictures to the guy up north that can make the baskets look like the original clay pots that the women held in their heads. Y'all, I saw them clay pots and I was like, stop the presses. The clay pot is what I want anyway. It don't need to be a basket because think about it. Let's talk about what else elements. I already have a basket and I'm gonna actually get another basket, red, yellow, and green like this for the recycling. It's the same basket, just I'm trying to do the red, yellow, and green in a different direction. I don't know, it might be exactly the same. I really, really, really love this. So I got basket elements, I got wood elements, I got wooden, you know, I got color. I don't, what about clay? I got the clay pots there, which I love, but those are flower pots or plant pots. Wait a second, I don't have to look, make a basket from the original clay pots that the women have. The clay pots didn't die. The clay pots still exist. So I'm gonna actually get by the clay pots that the women actually wear on their heads that were at least used to eat in the village. Some of them still do. As Faustina told me, they now they you use what they call rubber, the big the plastic stuff, and they also use the aluminum, 
even in the, some of the villages, because the clay pots, when they would fall, of course, back they would break, and that's more expensive. But he says there's still some women in some villages that still use it, especially for the palm wine. So these pots are specific to the palm wine. And I thought to myself, see, now this brings in the culture of Ghana, a piece of culture. It brings the women aspect of Ghana into the kitchen. It brings history. It brings almost a dying kind of, soon those will be like artifacts or something. You know what I'm saying? Because it'll be like we used to be in school and we would go to these museums that, you know, stole the Native Americans' uh, artifacts. Or actually, they were real live living tools. So, you know, you almost hate to say artifacts because as if nobody uses it anymore, and that's not true. And put them in museums. And hold on. <laughs> but it's kind of becoming that. And I thought, what a way to bring in real life culture. Something that took me when I saw, I told you I got this. If y'all saw that pre-sale video, I got like an electric shock that was so powerful. The ancestors called me with the real clay pots that the women really wore that you knew. And you don't see that in a crock, I can tell you that much. And like I said, now you don't really see it in the village. And I thought, that's it. I'm going to get the real clay pots of the real shapes. It's two shapes. I'm going to get all of them. I only need three for the top of this cabinet. I only need three. And uh, I can measure them. You could actually have them make you the size you want. Or Kwame feels like we can just get the find side. And of course, I'm going to paint them red and yellow. That up there is going to be green and yellow only. Excuse me, because the cabinet is already red. And I got to think about the yellow because the wall is already yellow. So it might be just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be green, which would be nice because that will bring more green. I don't know how I'm going to bring that, that in, but I'm going to color those. And they're going to be the beautiful clay pots, the real actual pots. And, of course, you can use those again and again. So that's what I decided today to do. And so Kwame said that the pots come in all sizes. They say pots, y'all, but they shape like vases. And, and they are pots. They look real. Yeah, they're pots. And so I'm going to get a number of them because the idea was to get these these bowls to put here to hold the fruit but the pots they have are open as well so i'm going to get the pots to uh the different clays and the different shapes that they come in uh that the women carry in their head they're beautiful y'all they're normal they're steady they're, they're natural but i'm gonna color them and i'm doing yellows and reds since that's going to be green I'm going to do yellow and reds, and it's going to be beautiful. So I'm still going to be able to have my fruit being held in something. It's going to be something more original, and it's going to look stunning. It's his history. It's gorgeous. So, yo, I got it. I got it. I got it. So that's what's coming next. So next next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint uh, uh, first. We got to paint. And then once I paint, and as I'm getting the bowls in it, and I'm gonna have the bowl, I gotta have the bowls painted, I gotta have the big bowls painted. This way, I don't have to go to or wait for the um, the guy, this person to do the basket. I can, the guy that paints, he ready to paint. He paint all day. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do that. Another thing that I had this great idea about these calabashes, right? So, you know, I really like, I like the Juafé, and I feel like I don't have enough of the Juafé symbol. So, I think I'm going to take it to the Calabash Lamp Guy and have him do the Juafés. Or, or the symbol of protection, whatever symbol that I decide, I'm going to have him do it. I'm going to have him actually turn it into light, lamps, right? I still want the lamp feature. Hold on, I'm just trying to get rid of it. Okay, I still want the lamp feature in these two calaboshes, but guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have somebody glue the calaboshes together, and I'm gonna have someone take a glass, which is easy to do, and make a coffee table. A calabash coffee table, I ain't never seen it, that lights up. So the coffee table lights up, 
the carver will carve in the indinkra symbols with other symbols around it, and you'll know this is what he do. So we'll show you his work. And this, this just came to me today. This is another. Uh, this will be another original design. So this is his leaf design, very stunning. Same thing on that one. This is his uh, his leaf design. I was feeling that his leaf design as well. And then when the light comes on, that's what makes it come out. And then this one is his heart design. You see the hearts. That's what it looks like out, which is still pretty, isn't it? And then you, the light comes on it. So oh, it's, it's the gourd. Heart design, right? Right, right, right. And then in the other Ashanti, in the Ashanti room, we have the lights on as well. So we have the Jinamine, which is beautiful. And then we have this spiral, funky, groovy, gorgeous, absolute. So I thought I could have, this would be a t another original design. I'm gonna have him carve it uh, with the Juafi and Juafi and some other beautiful symbols. Or not even symbols, whatever, he can go create after that, but that's what I want. And then have him put the lights in both. We have a we have a plug right right over here, so this is not going to be a problem. We're going to then I'm like I said get uh, I can get it from the cane people. I can get it from anywhere. Have a glass top and have a carpenter put these two together with the stand on it. I like the stand separation. Remember, it's going to be carved up. It's going to have lights. Put a round uh, glass top, and that is going to be a funky, original, Afrocentric home design coffee table that lights up. Remember, all this rough, you know, it's pretty. It ain't going to really matter because why? It's going to be carved. It's going to be lit up, a lit up coffee table, calabash, real live calabash, with the design lit. I'm taking it down here tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm taking this down because I got to do it fast because, you know, you don't want to change your mind. I don't change Well, I change my mind for the better, but I'm going to uh, talk to Carmen tomorrow, see if the carpenter can put the two together. But first, I want him to, of course, we got to get the lamp done. Then we can do the gluing of it together. Matter of fact, I actually will talk to the Calabash guy. He might could do the whole thing, put it together. And then, and even, yeah, even if we, yeah I want it all. And then I'm going to have somebody give me the glass. I'm going to have, because I was looking at this little seating area, and I thought those feathery things, it's not what it needs. This is a place that, I mean, when I come in sometimes, like, I really want to sit down. Like, I really, I really be wanting to sit. And I thought, look how nice it would be to have your beverage. Because this, this is where I sit when I, I'm moving furniture around or having creative ideas or just organizing like I got to go in the kitchen and organize all that stuff underneath it's going to be an overhaul I'm going to still have, I'm gonna have some, I got a shelf already built in there but I'm going to have another shelf in the other two I'm going to get rid of stuff I just got to go down there so I'll come in here you know this way I'll be chilling it should be a coffee table and plus who has a calabash carved lit up with lights coffee table I mean, at night, you could just put the coffee table on. Put the coffee table on, and tomorrow, tomorrow, I will have this taken to him tomorrow. And they both be lamps. And the good part is you just plug it in, and boom, that's it. And if I have to get a power surge, it's fine. Power stripped, it's fine because cause it's, it's going to be two lamps. So I, I got to plug two in. It's fine because I got the chairs to cover it. So nobody's gonna even see the power strip. What y'all thinking about how bad that gonna be? How bad that gonna be? Okay. And then, you know, that's the little, and it's like a little, it'll be like a little nook. I was thinking like, this is where I can write my ideas. This is, you know, just another spot. And this is where I can just chill, sit back and relax and think. This is like, I find when I sit in these chairs, these are my, I've worked hard, relaxing, sit down, cheers. It's gonna light up that picture. It's gonna be gorgeous. So that's another piece I'm coming up with. We got that piece, that, and over there, and I love that you could see, you could see it when you come in. What a beautiful, wonderful surprise. And wait till we have the stuff on the wall. 
And then remember, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some fabric and do the tie dye because I want that artwork. I want I want the art of Ghana and the, and the people of Ghana to be highlighted. So I want to tell y'all. Let me tell y'all about. I'm oh, gonna come here for a second. Let me tell you about something that's so funny, like y'all stuff is, this is just great. So my good sister friend Omi sent me this video. It came out about a month ago and it was about the art center, a sister at the art center interviewing a brother from the art center. And he was showcasing, uh, even just briefly, stuff made by the artist in the art center. So, um, Fouquet said, now, I mean, if you want to let me know, because I'm not sure how that went, but I mean, Fouquet said, oh, your cheers are in the video. The red, it's too much light making me hot. We got to be in a mood, it's a mood. She said, oh, your red, gold, and green cheers are in this video. Now, I don't know if she meant cheers like mine or my cheers. So I was showing Kwame, and Kwame said, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Those are your cheers. And I said, oh, yeah, they look like my cheers. No, they don't look like your cheers. Those are your cheers. And this brother is saying that he did that. I think the, I think the brother said, I got to go see, because it was so fast, that the brother said he did those cheers. He did not do those cheers. The woman from Togo did those cheers. And the idea of the cheers was my idea to do because Kwame has shown me that style. It was on, do y'all know the Papasan type of cheers? That's what I would call them. Well, they do those here. So they have metal cheers, metal framework, and they have that weaving on it, right? That weaving of the rope. And it's usually purples. I see a lot of purple. I don't know why, but purple, darker colors. I didn't even notice that those were those cheers. I didn't know those cheers to know the cheers. Kwame pointed out and said, I said, oh, look, oh, that's like the Papa Son cheers. That's what my mind was thinking. He said, huh? I said, oh, yeah, it's just the, the style that, you know, they sell like a world market store. He was like, oh, you want to get closer to the cheers? So when we got closer to the cheers, I said, ooh, what, what is that made of? How cool is that? He's like, it's like a rope weaving kind of, it's plastic, though. And I thought, oh, it's really cute. So then I went to One Africa, and she had cheers made similar uh, at One Africa. And I said, when we got home, I said, Kwame, I got it. That same style, that same plastic style. I said, I want those cheers. I mean, I want that style, that weaving, but I want it in red, gold, and green. Y'all know me. I want the red, gold, and green, but this is how it started. And he said, oh, yeah, that would look real cool. Yeah, you should do that. He said, matter of fact, I got some cheers. Now, usually, again, the standard is the metal frame, and then they weave it around the metal frame. Or we saw it even weaved around bamboo. That's what the sister in one Africa had. She had it around some bamboo, which was very stunning as well. But Kwame said, look, I said, well, let's go pick out, let me go, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, we can have everything built. Let me design the chairs, and then I already know I want red, yellow, and green, so that's it. And he said, no, you don't even have to buy the chairs because I already have chairs. Because you can do any chair you want. They just happen to use the metal the most. That's what I do see. But then they also obviously use the system, one Africa, or at least her or the designer used the, uh, used the bamboo. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll, yeah, okay, let's just use your chair. And then Kwame put them little baby chairs, and I looked and said, them chairs look tiny, Kwame. Who could fit them chairs? But Kwame had it for years. It was this some man out of the Netherlands that wanted the chairs uh, designed, uh, built. He wanted Kwame to build the chairs, and he did for a restaurant, I should say, a lot of years ago, a restaurant in the Netherlands. And when I saw them little chairs, I thought, mm, them Netherlands people must be tiny, okay? Because I don't know. But this is what I was thinking when I first, I was like, who could fit in these dang chairs, you know? But I was, okay. I was like, okay, Kwame, you know, Kwame want to contribute. So Kwame uh, did his thing, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, sanded, and did all the beautiful stuff that you do with a chair. And I was like, cool, okay. So then he said, you sure you want red, yellow, and green? Yes, are you kidding? That's what I want. So we told the lady, she said, okay, oh, Ghana? That's what they call it, is it red, yellow? Okay, yeah. 
So she did it. Took her two days. The first one was finished. She said, I'll do the second one tomorrow because I'm tired. This, I watched her do it. This is the woman did this, okay? So Kwame, so he puts it up like, and I think moved in and say, oh, yeah, the stuff could be shipped and this and that. But the guy, they told me all the stuff about the guy. The guy, I ain't going to say nothing bad about the guy, but let's just say some of the stuff is not true that he says. And number one, him making it or anybody make the thing is, Kwame's right. Kwame said, I can tell you this for a fact that there was no, nobody was doing the red, yellow, and green at the art center with that chair. So not only was that my toast cheers, because once the cheers was done, Kwame put them against the wall. It's the same wall, like it's the chair that somehow Kwame must have wanted. I don't know where he went. I don't know. He went to the bathroom. I don't know what happened. But the man took a picture of the cheers. Like, he did the cheers. The sister did the cheers. I came up with the concept, and Kwame brought the cheers. Do you get what I'm saying? And I just thought, like, look at my cheers. Like, look at my designs. How the other little nick of things I cut, and the other woman took it. And, and Kwame was telling me, because it's true, we're making these uh, the duvet covers for my sister who wanted to have my sister client. She's not what she is. She's sister, my soul sister. Sister in spirit. Uh, she wanted the mud cloth and then kente print on the other side. So we hooking it up, but one of them, in order to make it this a, a queen size, I had to add real, uh, real kente. It's beautiful, right? But the guy was showing me different fabrics. I was like, ooh, no, not that. Ooh, no, we can't have that. No. When he pulled out that, I said, it's got to go, it's got to be, it's got to, and he pulled out the real kente, he said, I'm willing to, let, you know, I had to pay for it, of course, but that's okay, I, I know it was in the budget. And so the sister who already copied my little knickers or capris was all smiling, looking, Kwame was like, she is definitely here to see what you're doing. So we try not to do everything right then and there. But anyway, I was like, yeah, you know what? I know you're right now, and I see it. So it wasn't about me. I laughed because really I think the credit goes to the Togolese woman because she was the one that, that, that weaved the chair. Okay, true, she didn't think about doing that. Nobody was thinking about doing that way, but you know what I'm saying? But I just laughed to think that to even see those chairs, and say, oh, I want this to be in the video, and I'm gonna take credit for it. I feel like good about that. Like that don't bother me at all. Like none of it does, cause it makes me realize that I'm having some new ideas. You know, even with, even with the basket that you saw with the red, yellow, and green. Kwame again. You know, Kwame could bounce. Kwame been there for. Kwame's almost 50, and he's been at the art center. I think since it started, I'm almost like, or something like that. I don't know how long it's been around, but since, you know, for years, okay? At least two decades. Um, so maybe three, uh, maybe four, seriously. Um, but so he was like, and he said, yeah, let's, well, I got the basket now. Everybody's like, oh, Ghana basket, Ghana. Oh, I never saw that. Oh, Kwame was like, you know what? Let's get this out at home. Because if they find out this is a hot item, they will have 1,500 of these made because they think people are going to buy them. So, yeah, y'all. So this is what I was thinking, and I, I'm not sure, and I'm not trying to assume or nothing like that, or, you know, I'm not even bragging. What I think is happening is that I think that this is what the Africans said to me, and I'm going to go back to that. They said, you know, you y'all you, you, like Africa, and we like America. We like the American stuff. You like the African stuff. Um, an African said to me, it's because we have it. We don't see it in the way you see it because it's here. And for us, Andinkra symbols are always going to be here. Kente is always going to be here. Mud Club is always going to be here. That's how they see it. It's us sometimes, the diasporans, that say, hey, let's do the cheer, red, yellow, and green. Hey, let's do a laundry basket, turn it into a trash can, and do it red, yellow, and green. So, the, even the other Kwame, who, if you'll notice, I've heard you commented on it, this is the, he's the many things. He's the locksmith, right? He's the electrician. I'm really going to put that on. He's the painter as well. 
and he wears his African pants all the time. And somebody noticed that he, he got, always has the nicest African pants. So when he comes into like, you know, because he, he's out with the kitchen, he painted the, 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 the room, this one here with Kojo. He, he says to me, you know, I like African too. I, I like African too. Because it's kind of like he's trying to say, I ain't like the rest of these Africans. I like African stuff, you know. And he's like, wow, you know, they say, like, you really like Africa. So I think we're helping. I think we're helping. I think that we're taking what they normally have that they wouldn't think anybody else really wants and turning it into something beautiful and giving it back. It's theirs. But at the same time, it's ours, too, because we're one, one Africa. And I, said, I don't take that saying anymore to mean one Africa, meaning one African continent. One Africa to Africans wherever you are. So on that level, I feel so good about it. And on the level of as a designer, I'm feeling real good. And the more you create, the more the universe and ideas that the universe will give you to create more. You won't be able to stop. You can, I can't stop. But the thing is, you create all the time. It's just that you don't say, you don't let anything go to allow the new to flow in. That's why I'm doing my next intensive, how to say goodbye. Because I had to say a lot of goodbyes to have all this flowing. I had to say a lot of goodbyes to have the confidence to keep going. I had to say a lot of goodbyes. I'm relentless. I'm relentless. I want it. I won't stop. My money is in, my, in, in me. I invest in me. When I invest in my designs, I'm invested in myself. I'm invested in my desires. I'm invested in my dreams. And that's the truth. So, yeah, so to see my cheers on, on this little video um, with this guy who I think he said he did it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But uh, don't bother me. I mean, I guess there's ones I'm up. So when people say things like, oh, it's just that or it's just this, anybody could do it, but they didn't do it. Anybody could do it, but they didn't do it. You did it or I did it. They didn't do it. So I'm sure, and they be watching me anyway. I'm the new kid on the block, and I be wearing my African clothes and with my little stuff, so... You know, I didn't even start really designing my clothes, but I'm really, y'all, I really want to do the bags. Like, the bags, is, I'm on the bags. And whatever else come. Because there's some, and, and the, the, um, the definitely the uh, plant stands, uh, baskets, everything. Everything. But right now, I'm resurrecting those clay pots. And I'm going to put in the red, yellow, and green for now, just to let it... Because I think, especially for younger people, uh, the clay pots is what their grandmothers or great-grandmothers used to carry. And I think sometimes you got to do the Sankofa, go back and fetch what was old and bring it back anew. You know, Ghana is new. Ghana is a fairly new country. They, didn't, they just really got their independence. So the idea of even the red, yellow, green with the black star is still a new concept. But the idea of the, of the, of the or really specific, the clay pots on the head is an old one. So I'm seeing Kofrin all over the place because the Medinkra symbols mean something, I keep telling y'all. I'm seeing Kofrin all over the place. I'm, I'm taking the old and bringing it back anew. And, and then it's all relative. And I'm bringing Ghana to Ghana. So it's important, like, I can't even explain to y'all. I must keep that kitchen red, yellow, and green. I must represent Ghana, and I must represent it in a way. And who knows where this kitchen's going to go? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm giving reverence to Ghana. I mean, how could that be bad? I'm giving reverence to Kwame Nkrumah. I'm giving reverence to market women. I'm giving reverence to village women. I'm giving reverence to carpenters and carvers and painters and electricians. And I mean, this is why I'm doing it. It's not just me and seamstress, males and females. I gotta do it, y'all. I got to. 
It's showing my respect to the home country that I live in. And I'm giving thanks for that. So lots of beautiful stuff. So that's my idea. Calabash coffee tables. You can see how many you can do. I'll, I'll, mm, yeah. All right, let's see who's on. Naturally clever. Hello, hey, Lakeisha, Nicole, hey, family. New mod at Lakeisha Russell, peace, queen. Lakeisha, peace, naturally clever, beautiful custom. Thank you, Nicole. Lonnie Redwine, David, greetings, Lisa, and all to you too as well. Tiara, ah, that is so, thank you. Cute, thank you. Joy says, hey, Lisa, kitchen looking on point. Thank you, Joy. Hey, Charles Mary 31. Hello, Lisa, your home is looking beautiful, loving me, Darcy. Zama, hey, sis, your home is looking amazing. Thank you, darling. Like you, your mom said, Trent said, ah, Ashe. I know her presence is all in the house, isn't it? Ashe, gotta be, right? Maya says, it's hard being a trendsetter. Everything I've ever made has been copied. It's frustrating. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it definitely could be for sure. People are just confirming that I, you got, that's what I, I you know what? And that's how I took it because I wasn't mad like Kwame and Koja was like, he said, what? Wait a second, that's your chick. I didn't even notice. I was just asking them, do you know this guy? That's all I, I didn't even see the cheer. And then I went back to the message and only said, those are your, your cheers are in this video. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't even realize. I, I didn't even know. I, I, I didn't even get it. But. This time I took it, I, this time, the first time I was a little bit like, no, she didn't watch me wear the outfit and went and, and made it that fast. This, this time I was like, okay, I got an eye. That, that's, that's what it said to me. I got an eye. Because those tears were sitting there and maybe even the camera person, the woman that was interviewing him said, what about these tears? Well, that's what the videos that she's saying. So, I mean, it's, it's a show stop. So that, that is more of what I got, and it made me think not to hold, not to get scared, just to keep going. That you bring in something new old to the table, and that you're not done yet. Like, you got a whole lot more, and that I'm not keeping it just up here. I'm immediately doing it. And you know what else it told me? And it should tell y'all this. I don't know why. I hope my last intensive, y'all not going to be in that last intensive. The thing that it tells me the most is hold your vision. Hold your vision. Hold, I'm going to say that because that, I think, is the most important thing. Hold your vision. Y'all was here. How many of y'all, if one of y'all is it, told me don't do that, don't do it like this, don't do it like that, do it like this, do it more like that, you should do it like that. But I fought for my vision. I fought for it. No, I'm not. No, don't tell me no. Keep it to yourself. No. And y'all thinking, that's not nice. She being mean. F that B. I mean, I'm sure a whole lot of stuff was going around. Probably with some people. Don't watch her. I don't like her. I don't like her attitude. She be telling people not to tell her what she wanted. Hold your vision. I, I, I don't know if I've been this good at holding my vision, but I kind of think I have. But I, I have never saw myself hold it the way I've held it. That's why I taught a whole class on it. That's what we're doing now. That's the class. That's the intensive now. The November one is already closed. Hold your vision. Because if you don't, somebody else will. And if you take everybody else's, then it ain't yours, and you ain't going to feel good the next day. You're not going to feel like you contribute. You're not going to feel good. I have to hold my vision with Kwame, but Kwame getting better at it. Kwame getting way better at Don't even go over there and suggest and turn it around. One time I let Kwame turn around, my, my bag turned out not the right way. Because Kwame talking tree, and I'm saying, what, what you telling him? Hold on, wait, let me make sure. Oh, yeah. Today, I'll tell you home vision. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm helping to create for my client her vision. And, but she's allowing me to edit. She's allowing me to say, you're right on the ground. Ooh, don't do that. I don't know about that. So the pillowcases. The guy did the pillowcases but loved it. He said, but I want you to see it, the, the sewing job. Kwame brought me that pillowcase. Everything around it was right except for this one piece. But that one piece ruined, could ruin the whole damn thing. No, Kwame says, 
Well, I, he get a call over and said, oh, I'll, I'll be back. I said, where you going? I'll be back. Where you going? Oh, the guy called me and he said that the pillowcase, that the guy finished some part of it and he told me to come see it. Why, why would you come see it? I have to say, well, why are you going to see it? Well, you're going to tell him it looks good? I mean, you can't do that. Like, you can't do that. You don't even know what it's supposed to look like. No. He said, oh, you want me to bring it to me? Yeah, of course I want you to bring it to me. What you going, was you going to tell him? Do you see what I have to go through? This is what I have to go through. He don't get it. You don't okay nothing. <laughs> you don't okay nothing. No. And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yes. What you want? What you going to tell? Why is he? He's supposed to call you to tell you to tell me to come. But I did. Okay. But Kwame said, he said, no, the reason why I didn't want you to come. Plus, I mean, the reason why I brought him, I want to bring it to you is because he knows that the girl that we steal it. No, they live him still. But she's right across. And she be like, hey. Oh, she phony as phony baloney, too. He's right. He's trying to keep everything on the low, too, and at the same time. But I said, don't keep it on the low for me. I, I got to tell the people. Because I, I said, when I present this to my client, I got to stand behind it and say, this is why let me just do this. This is why I made this choice. You know what I'm saying? This is why I thought we should go this way. But no, with the, the guy, but, it's, but I'm going to tell her, Melissa, if you're watching, ooh, that pillowcase, that pillowcase, sister. It is, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It wasn't going to be, it was going to be this little piece on there. I don't know what the hell. Like, how are you going to turn? No, don't do that. Anyway, they, they fixed it. But I'm glad they're coming to me for step to step. So, yeah, it was an eye thing for me. But I can also see how very frustrating it could be as well. Tierra says, it's good you're not mad about it. What happens if you, if, if you see him again? Kwan, well, Kwame and, Kwame and his brother was pissed enough for me because I was like, okay, but Kwame then was like, oh, I was like, ooh, I don't know what tomorrow going to look like. So, yeah, you're right, Tierra. Learn about saying goodbye in the last intense of 21 day. $97 begins December 6th. Sign up and get your space at blackberrybeautyacademy.com. Thank you. She put it right there if you're interested. Jackie C says, greetings and blessings. Love your style. Thank you, Jackie C. Natural Club says, I could imagine that Maya Wallace, that's why sometimes I have problems releasing my creations. It's true. Something old is new again. Yes, Jackie C. Emma says, hey, Lisa. Maya says, I needed to accept being copied and acknowledged. TMH is sending me the next creation. That's right, the most high, yes. Tierra said, do bogus, and the girl that took your idea, how are he going to reproduce it? He can't, exactly, exactly. This intensive is a blessing. Join the next one and help you gain deeper insights and move you forward along your journey. Saying goodbye, 21 day intensive. Yes, because naturally clever is in the one holding your vision. You know, and that's the thing like we could talk about. I mean, this is what I was telling y'all that the brother Nana Asari was saying that there's a sister here from New York who has a shop in Osu, which is right here in Accra, and how she doesn't put out the stuff she sells at the shop is just the local stuff she gets here. That her actual designs, she only ships them to, the, to New York because she says, and other parts of the United States, uh, because she says that if she creates it in the little Osu uh, and she puts it and sells it, they will copy and they will. But see, here, I think it's the understanding, and it's just a whole nother understanding, and, and, and Kwame continually tells me this, so they don't consider it copying as wrong. It's like it's normal. Somebody else do it, and everybody does it. And there's 15 versions of it. No, 1,500. So it's a concept for us to patent, copyright, but they don't even tell you, but they respect when it is. I don't know, must have been a white man, I don't know, maybe it was a black person, I can't even say that, but that place where I got the, those masks, it was a beautiful, stunning blue mask, and I said, ooh, well, how much is this? They said, ooh, no, that's patent, that's copyrighted, we can't sell that to you. So I don't know if some white person made the mask and, and got the paperwork, or a, a black smart person, I'm not really sure. So I, I would like to copyright a patent at the same time. What I don't want to do, I don't want to worry too much. And what I don't want to do is not create. Because I heard you, uh, Natural Cover, say that's why I'm afraid to put on my creations, but somebody else will. Like somebody told me, I learned this in metaphysics a long time ago. Once you have it here, it's already out in the atmosphere. 
So it's for, that's why you didn't do something. You see somebody else doing me like, damn, I should have do, did that. Because once you conceive it, it's, it's kind of freely amongst. It's out there. So the worst thing you could do is not do it, not create. Now, you're going to have to ask yourself some other questions. Are you, do you have some fear about having your stuff out there? And then what is that fear of? Some people say success. Some people say failure. Are you fearful? Do you have a, a hard time completing something because more than just you don't have the time? You know, you, it's like, and it's not just creating so-called art. It's the, the stuff. It's something deeper really going on. Because you, you, it should be so in you, you can't wait. Don't deny yourself and others of your pleasure. And that could be creating that book, creating that play, creating that dance, creating that song. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, creation is creation is creation. You got to create. And you know what, y'all? Sometimes you just got to get to a certain age where you're going to feel like it's now or never. Or you got to get into a creative environment. Another thing, too, you kind of got to a little bit be fierce. I know some people would think, like, oh, my God, like, she's mean to Kwame. I'm not. I'm training Kwame quite well. I'm training Kwame in what my ideas mean to me. I'm training Kwame in having respect for my creative space and time. You got you to gotta fight for something, and you got to. If you don't fight for yourself, then damn. Like, what? You don't fight for yourself? You don't fight for what's yours? You don't fight for what came from you? Like, what else is there? I, it ain't nothing more important than you, to you, or at least it shouldn't be. You got to fight for something. And a lot of times, you know, you want to think, oh, they don't mean it, they don't mean no harm. No. Some people do mean they know exactly what they're doing. And it's a lot of people, you know, I realize it's what they say, you should keep your friends close and your enemies closer or something like that. It's like sometimes the people closest to you is the people that's the most jealous or fearful because jealousy falls under fear, y'all. Doubt. Jealousy, anger, all of it is fear. So if you are jealous, that's fearful too. I, I, I don't want to say this, but like I was thinking about this today, I was kind of laughing. I'd be talking to myself. And I was like, girl, you don't trust nobody. And that's okay. I don't really do, to be honest. I, don't, I think I did a lot, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, hear, I don't hear. I don't have that in me. I'm loyal to me and my thoughts and my ideas. I'm honest. I have integrity. If it ain't mine, I say it. But I, I don't. Mm -mm. I've had two. I've actually in my life have had jealous men or boyfriends, spouse, whatever you want to call it, lovers, whatever, partners. I've had them in my life, and I was the only one didn't know. And everybody around me is like, "You think they jealous? No. Why would they be?" And that's because sometimes you do stuff that you, it's easy for you, and for other people it's not, so you don't even know you got anything. You have no idea that you have something. And then you got people around you that never say, great job, you did good. This particular person around me, he never tells me that looks good, that look nice, you did good, you came with it first, mm -mm, ever. And I look for that. It's like, they don't want you, I don't know. It's because they, 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 some people think if you thought or you knew who you really were and you knew who you really were or really was or who you really are, that you wouldn't want to be with them anymore. You wouldn't want to hang out with them anymore. You would, and it's not that you wouldn't. You would have to naturally go to the next level. You know, there was a part of me getting a little impatient, like, yeah, I know there's more. I know there's more people that I just can connect with. And I know I need to. And Spirit told me today, don't worry. It's all going in that direction. Stay on the path. Continue to do. And enjoy where you are. It's naturally going to move to the next level. I already know it. I already see it. It's almost like, and I've always been one of those people, but not purposely, but Marcus Garvey talked, Marcus Garvey talked about it. 
I'm a great student when I'm very when I'm interested in a topic. And I've had some great mentors at the same time. And I that your ideas, they're supposed to teach you so well that one day you become their master. They're supposed to teach you so well so one day you become their master. And sometimes I feel like what happened to this is the, 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 the process of just slow. I feel like I'm getting faster, better. I come down there with a purpose. I, don't, I come to the art center with a purpose. I'm working. I ain't sitting around. I'm not shucking and jiving. I'm very serious about what I have to do. But you got to have people around you that feel that, but a lot of people not. They're just not that serious. They're just not that into it. they just not. they just not. It don't have the same, your dream don't have the same meaning for somebody else. That's why you can't expect people to give you what you need to fuel you to do what you want to do. You waiting for your husband, you waiting for your sister, you're waiting for your mother, you're waiting for your father to acknowledge that you're something or you got something or you should do something. They can't and they won't. So I don't mind that I don't hear that from certain people in my life because don't bother me. I know what I'm doing. I know how good it feels and I know it's going to sell if I want to sell. I, I'm not a kid anymore. I don't need people's acknowledgement. I don't need people's accolades. I don't. But when I don't, when you don't give me my props, I know that that says something to me. Sometimes it's just the fear. If I tell, then they ain't going to be me. Like, like you don't know, you beyond this ish. And that's a lot of us, oh, we were so told, told to be so humble. We were told to never toot our own horn. And that's going to get us as black women in trouble. Because we'll never move forward because we got to be humble. Instead of being like, no, I kicked ass on that ish right there. Yo, I did that shit right there. Yo! You ain't do it. <laughs> it's okay. Nope, not me. I'd be like, you saw this? Let me show y'all. Let me show you this ish. Let me show y'all. Anyway, wake up, people. Wake up. Like, share, subscribe, comment, or donate. See, I'm not understanding. I feel like I'm kicking it. I feel like I am giving it up. I feel like I am knowing y'all go to sleep feeling better and wake up feeling better. I believe that. Why y'all don't donate? Like, what's going on? Anybody want to donate? Donation is right there. Donate. Let me know you awake. Let me know you care. Let me know you appreciate. You say you want people to appreciate you. Well, you got to appreciate the people that you get your inspiration from. I'm just coming real. Why you don't donate? I'm not, I'm trying to figure it out. What's wrong? You should donate. It makes you feel good. It's good for you. And it's called tithing. I'm telling y'all, I tithe, I give, I do. Something in me says more because I could feel... Maybe I can't always see, but I could feel the abundance. I could see, but I can't quite. And that's good because that keeps it exciting. Something big going to go on. Something about to really, many, many about to's and then realities are happening. So I've been buying classes from people. And if I can't take them right away or watch them, donating to people's channels that say, hey, you should get a donate button because I like to donate. I'm, I got to do it because that's what spirit said is next. The tithing is the one missing piece in most of our lives. You can't sit and take. You can't sit and get all this inspiration and don't give nothing. Five dollars. I mean, I, I think you should get more than five, but if that's what you got. You're not, you, know, you can take a class and get something. No, that's not going to do it. You can listen to this hours that go by. You're not, I'm trying to understand, like, what are we doing anyway? Oh, I can't afford to get some on your site. Well, you can afford to donate, can't you? It's good for you. And it's going to bring you a lot of prosperity and abundance. There's a couple of things that I live by. 
especially being in Ghana, I see, and I could put it in words. First of all, always pay your debts. Always pay the people you owe, even if it's going to leave you broke. Always. Kwame, if I told him I'd give it to him for what he did, even if I'm going to have 10 CDs left, and I owe him, a, I'm going to pay him that 100 or give him another 100, he gets the 100, and I'll be left with the 10 CDs. Always pay your debts. Always pay the people that do the work for you. Always pay your employees, always. Pay your people, pay the debts, pay your employees. Especially the people that do for you, pay them. They work for you, pay them. Don't tell them later, don't tell them next week. Another thing that I do is I try not to, if somebody asks me, if, if I like something somebody is giving or selling, I, I don't never so I do my best to accept and pay. I have not even been negotiating at the, at the arts. And the first one, they give me fair prices, and it sounds good. Because I know what I'm going to sell it for, so I want them to have the best too. Another thing is, if somebody inspires you, I took a class from a young sister that's in my intensive now, holding the vision. I, well, I paid for the class. She is 26 or 28. I'm so inspired by her. That's why I bought the class and told her, advertised on, in the group, I want everybody to buy your class. You, you got to give. You got to give. I give my, I buy food and fruit and give it to the kids that's in the, in the art center. I do whatever I can because I know that I'm in a privileged position. They maybe think I'm more privileged than I really am, but it doesn't matter. And I notice that people trust me and believe in me. And always have your name being good out here in this world. Make sure that your name is solid, that your name, that when people talk about you, they say good things and not bad things. I'm telling you, if you take for free, you ain't going to get nothing. You think you're getting over, but you're really not. If you can be mad if you want to, because I asked you to donate, you can be mad if you want to, but I'm here to teach. And I don't, it, don't look, it ain't a good look. It ain't a good look. I love you. Donate. Take a class. That, that show you love. The rest is just talk. And, but the thing is, when you donate, tithe, whatever, you benefit as well. I'm telling y'all that that is the one missing thing with black folks. Except for church, you're tired all the time. That's the one missing thing that black people got to get better at is stop taking and also give. I know nobody can't tell me that every night I'm coming on here and my words don't ever resonate. You mean you got nothing. You mean you just wasted a whole hour listening to me. Stop making excuses. Now, a few rules, too, I want to tell. I know people are going to get mad, but this is what I do. Listen, I love y'all, but I got to eat and I got to make a living, too. So I can't do layaway. I can't do layaway. And I can't do installments. And I can't do hold I can't do it. It's not it's not fair. It's not fair to me. I, I gotta eat too. I, I can't do that. I can't take money orders coming from the state and I'm in Ghana and you're gonna mail it in the mail. That's 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 not fair. I can't do that. And I would like you to not ask me to do stuff that you ain't asking Target to do. You're not asking Macy's to do. And damn sure, if you're asking your landlord, after a while, they're going to throw you out. Because I know. I've been through that. We got to grow up. And we got to really treat the people that we say we love. We can't come to them sideways. We can't come to them with, can, you, can I lay us away? Can I do installments? Can I... Um, can I send you money orders? Huh? That, that's not right. That's just, that just means right now you can't afford it, and that's okay. Donate the money that you can afford, and more money will come to you so that you can just out and out buy it. 
I tend to don't do that. I grew up lay away, lay away, and I hated it, to be honest. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it because I'm a now person, so you know I couldn't stand it. I buy if I can't if I can't buy it I can't afford it and I just buy something I can afford. I, I mean just to make myself happy because you always can get something. But I ask you with all graciousness, all respect and all love, no layaway, no installments, and definitely without a doubt, no money orders. This is the this is the digital age. I mean. It's too easy to get your money now. It's soon that's going to be the only way to get your money. And then a money order from the United States to Ghana? It might not even get here. Okay, I'm just being honest with you. My stuff that was ordered two, three months ago, it's still not here because it was chia seeds, hemp seeds, all this powder stuff. And it keeps saying it's in Miami and it says no more. They probably confiscated and thought it was maybe as contraband. I don't really know what they did. It ain't here. It probably ain't coming. That's what my post office guy told me here. You might not see it. I'd be damned you sent a money order from the United States to Ghana. It's not right. Another thing. There's one more thing just about etiquette, just to be fair. You say you love me, I love you too. I think loving people should do loving things for each other. Uh, you got to start asking me for stuff that I don't have. Like, it's, that's what it is. It's that apron that looked that way. No, I don't have that in five other different ways and different things. Do you really want this or you just want to have my, my attention? Sometimes I think... Y'all just want my attention, and I, 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 I give long videos, so I don't know how much more attention I can give you. I'm not devaluing myself, so please don't devalue me, because I'm not devaluing myself. I don't, I'm not going to let you devalue, devalue me. It's not right. Why, I mean, we don't do this to white folks. We don't do this to the Macy's. We don't do this to Target. We don't do this to nobody else. Well, I'm your homegirl, like, because I'm not. I'm not your homegirl, and don't do your homegirl like that either. You, you ain't going to have friends for long. We want to be friends. Now, I want to thank all of my customers, clients who love and respect me, and you treat me that way, and that's 99% of y'all. And you ever think that I'm wrong? I mean, one person... She told me about an item I have and how much it should be. That's probably going to be this and it's worth it. I give her the price. She come with some requests that I couldn't. There's no way I could have honored that request. And then got on the video and made a comment and tried to put the price out of the item and said, I got other things to do with it. You the one said to charge that much. You said you would pay that much. And then this, the I don't know what's going on. It makes me like, this is some, some what, what's, but then, this, I'm just going to tell you, you're in business. You can't even take that personally. You got to keep moving. You, when I say you got to be strong, you got to stand for yourself, people are not going to like it. People are not going to like you standing up for yourself and telling the truth. How many people say, how y'all watch me for hours and don't even donate? How you go to sleep at night feeling good about that? They're going to be like, wrong. What's going to be about how many thumbs down? 40 people, 14 thumbs up. So I don't, it's okay. Because maybe I gave somebody else the strength to turn around and tell somebody else in their family or their friends. And be like family be really the one, but friends too. You know what? No, you're not going to get it for free. No, you can't do that. No, I want to get paid everything. Somebody is gaining the strength from this. I, the rest that don't, don't even matter to me. It don't even matter. One's going to get mad. Hey, do your thing. Do your thing. And if you leave a nasty comment, I'm, I'm naturally clever. You're going to get rid of it, and I'm going to do it too. Deep down inside, y'all like me. I already know it. But if you really like me, you see I'm out here trying to create some beautiful things. Help me. Donate. Don't keep watching and don't donate. It's, it's, it's not right, y'all. It's not right. All right, queens. I'm going to go to sleep now.
I've come with my grandma. Grandma had to come out and say what she had to say. Yes, so I am just had to do it. That's right, that's good, naturally. I remember my grandmother had a visit about book bags on wheels, be, uh, okay, about, because mine, so he's with my books. She said, I saved my back. We laughed and laughed. Now look, oh, I, I missed that. I think some of the, the spell check. Uh, she should have held her vision. I've learned to hold my vision and hold my tongue. Gotcha. Salmon says, talking about being copy, since I went to your boutique because I've been missing the lies, but caught a replay when you mentioned the site would be up on Monday with curtains. And when I went to the Afrocentric Home Decor site, I saw a site, it said, coming in January 2020, and wondered if that you or someone trying to copy. Wow, so you saw a site that said AfrocentricHomeDecor.com. Ooh, there you go. I'll have to look it up. Thank you for sharing. I'm sure. Wow, and took the whole name. Wow, I'm trying to tell you. In your class, I'm going back over the gems and feel inspired to get my things out there. I see that I was definitely not alone. That motivates me since releasing. I have been in sketchy, uh, sketchy abundantly. I've been sketching abundantly. Yay! Donate in support of the channel. Thank you, Naturally. Thanks to the, for the link, Natural Clever. Thank you. You're welcome, Zama. Thank you, Natural Clever. Says, wow, wow, wow. Zama, send me. Uh, I'm just curious. Zama, send me the link. Uh, yeah. Send me the link. I would love to see it. I'm going to look it up too, but send me the link. I mean, just took the whole thing. And there we go. So, yeah, y'all, just remember I said earlier today, don't give up. Keep going. Love you, ladies. I'll see you in the morning. Kwame is looking for me. We got business. You know how we do it. I'll see y'all in the morning. I love y'all. And uh, everything I said, I said with love, peace and blessings.